Hey guys, Lady Locks here, and I've got an American 1100 that I'm going to do a pick and gut plus the reassembly. I'm doing this for one of my subscribers, Joel. He was having a hard time with his, I guess, and he just said it would be really nice to see a reassembly video on this lock, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm using this, uh, looks like a medium hook. I think I need a standard hook for this one, but... Looking around, I don't have one right here with me, so I'll try this one and see how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, this one has a, a strange uh, curve in the keyway there that I have to get around. Some wording, and this hook might be too long. But we'll see. Yeah, there we go. A nice full set. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and close this. And when you close these, make sure that you pay attention to which end the pins are on and which end you're turning. Because if you turn it the wrong way, it's kind of hard to get it out of that because of this ledge here. But just make sure that you see which side the pins are and you turn it accordingly. Don't just, um, you know, turn it thinking you know because when you actually when you close the core it snaps this the whole or you close the shackle it snaps this the whole entire way around so it ends up the opposite direction and you have to turn it in the opposite direction um you might miss that if you're not paying attention so always pay attention to where your pins are uh, that and on those lotto 410s you really have to pay attention to those too all right these can give you trouble getting them in and out because of the loctite on there if that does happen, just take something, um, you know, take a, a hammer and just hammer this a little bit with the screw inside. Just hammer the, the um, top of the screw a little bit like this. You know, just give it a, a whack and it will come loose. Hopefully. Usually it does. All right, so all the goodies come out. And I just set those aside. I locked my core. Now the next thing I've got to tackle is this clamp. We all know how I am with clamps. But I'm hoping this time I can get it pretty easily. Let's see here. There we go. Clamp is off. Yay! Alright. Gutting, um, if you have the plug follower that has the attachment on it for the 1100, um, you know, that, that fits like this, that's great. If not, you can make do by turning the key, if you hold it this direction, turning the key towards you a bit um, until this end is lined up. Always use a shim, but you can make do kind of pushing it through like this if you're careful. But it's better to have the attachment and, um, you know, just be able to push it through that way. So I do have the attachment, but I'm still going to shim it and if I can get it in there. Another thing to note is always be careful when you've got the clamp off of these, just be careful handling them. Because you can, you know, accidentally push this core right on out of there. And it can also just fall right out of there. So, you always just want to be careful handling them. Um, that you're not going to do that with yours. Alright. So, just pushing this through. Okay. So... Basically, uh, I guess I can just fully got this and we can look at it. I mean, it's nothing special, but we can take another. I don't, I think I got it in my first video, so it's on that, but goodness. Great. So there you have it. Pins are out, nothing special with the core. 
And these little guys are all, well, we've got a couple serrated, a couple standards, three serrated and two standards, it looks like. Okay. Um, another thing to note is um, this will be the front, the front of your lock, the one that has this notch right here. You see this ends kind of, this ends, you know, flush this one has a little notch cut out that's going to be the front just make sure that you you know note that when you're gutting it when you're getting the lock when you're reassembling the lock um, that's going to be the front right there <clears throat> so when you take your pins out and put them back in just make sure that you're doing it in the right direction all right this one's kind of um, the springs don't really have much action in this one so it's not going to um they don't really pop out too too much the springs aren't very strong so i mean you can see that uh, i don't know if you could see it in there but it's really not uh not coming up that much out of there got one that wants to be stuck. There's always a problem, child, when you're trying to do this and show people. So anyways, I'm going to leave the springs in here because there's no really need to take them out. Um, they're not very springy anyways, and I'm only going to reassemble this right away. So here we got the pins. We've got four serrated and one spool with the serration marks on it. So all these serrations are tricky uh, when you're picking this lock. That's why I like to use heavier tension. There's serrations everywhere. And, uh, you know, you can um, very easily click past these and start on the serrations on the key pin and think you're still on the driver. And so that can trip you up and have you over setting pins. All right, so putting it back together same thing you just want to make sure that you know which side is the front of the lock so you know um you can always mark it as well just so that you know and you don't have to be one you know looking for the part that's notched out or forgetting that's what's happening with it um, let's see if i can get some better light here on these guys there we go that might work out a little better it's hard to see inside of here putting these back. All right, so I usually start from the back and put a couple in and then turn around and go into the front and you know put the rest in. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go through the back there to uh, that'll be number four. So remembering how we laid our pins out, I'll usually lay the pins out in this direction one, two, three, four, five, etc. So that's pretty much universally how it's done. You can do it however you want, but it's good to do it one way so you remember that. And it becomes habit so you know what um, what pin you're on and all that good stuff. But just keep it to the same direction each time and then you'll be used to it. All right, so starting in there, I've put the fourth pin in. Now for the fifth pin. And remembering, uh, I did not take the springs out. So if you did take your springs out, you need to put them in first and then you're putting back in the drivers. Now I put um, four and five in, six was empty. So now I'm turning this back around so that I can just reach these easier. That's the only reason uh, for doing this this way. All right.
Okay. So we've got these all out or back in. I'm sorry. Now we're going to put the key pins in. I always like to put them in with the key in there already so that I know if, uh, you know, I've messed any of them up, mixed anything, and, uh, you know, have something in the wrong order. If you do that, your key will not work. So, doing these all back in there. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, or the same thing just backwards. I'll shim it up. Remember where your front is. All right, and you're going to place the shim in there so that it's sticking out over the, uh, you know, sticking out over the plug follower a little bit. And... Sure it's not turned. You don't want to put it in upside down like this or all your key pins will just fall right on out the bottom so make sure it's not turned that far when you're putting it back together. And just slide it on through. Pull the shim out and test your key. Be very careful that you do not pull the key at this point. You definitely need to get this clamp back on first. Always make sure you put your clamp on as soon as possible. Okay, so the clamp is back on. Tested the key. Get take it out and put it back in. Okay, so all good there. Now placing it back in the lock, you're just going to place it in the same direction and everything that it came out. Slide it in there. It will only fit in here the correct way. So, you know, making sure you're doing it right. Now I usually put mine together this far. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and close the shackle without this screw in and just make sure that this works to pop the shackle, which it does. All right. Once you know that that definitely works, then you can place the last piece in there, the screw, and get that back into the lock. Yeah, you definitely want to test that before you Put this screw in in case uh, something's missing inside the lock that's you know or something's out of place inside of here that uh, would be used to pop the shackle um, sorry I don't know the, the name of a lot of things but I do know what I'm talking about I just don't know what anything's called <laughs> well that's debatable if I know what I'm talking about I know what I'm talking about about this uh, so yeah just making sure that works um, in case something, ha you know, some you never know what can happen. And if you put the screw in there and, you know, there's a problem inside, um, there's no, you know, you can't get that back open to fix it. So always check it before you finish up. And um, that's it. The American 1100 picked and got it and reassembled. Uh, Joel, I hope this helps you a little bit. Um, or I hope it helps anybody else that is dealing with these 1100s. Uh, there are <clears throat> videos out there if you don't have the plug follower and some of the tools. There are videos out there to um, show you what you can use, like household items or whatever, as replacements for all those things. So you can still work on the lock and gut it, even if you don't have all the, the uh, tools, ex the exact tools you need for it. You can make them or, you know, hunt around the house and find stuff that'll work. So there you have it, the American 1100, guys. This is not one of my favorite locks, but um, it is a nice little lock. So, all right. Uh, if you like my videos, uh, click the like button. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. And take it easy, everybody.